So back in 2023, Brighton released limited edition watch honoring two icons of aviation. Its own Navi Timer, arguably the greatest pilot's watch of all time, and the Boeing 747, the most iconic passenger jet ever to take to the skies. This combination was obviously just a matter of time in the making, but 2023 was a significant year. The Queen of the Skies is sadly no more, but to celebrate its legacy, Breitling have given us this, the Navitimer 747, a special edition chronograph inspired by its iconic namesake and limited to just 747 examples. In this video, we'll take a look at what's good, what's not so good, and see how it wears. All to see if this is the best Navitimer ever, and more importantly, is it a worthy tribute to the legendary 747? Let's take a look. So the 23rd of January 2023 marked an important date in the world of aviation. Boeing delivered its last 747, a plane that defined the golden age of air travel, a true icon of design and engineering. It's the most recognizable aircraft the world has ever seen. The phrase jumbo jet was born. It really was a game changer, making long haul travel accessible to the masses and connecting the world like never before. The 747 is legendary in every sense of the word, and it's only fitting that Brighton decided to celebrate its epicness with a special edition of its most iconic pilot's watch. The Navitimer was launched in the early 50s and soon adopted by the American Aircraft and Pilots Association as the de facto pilot's watch. Its iconic slide rule bezel allowed pilots to easily calculate critical data such as ground speed, rate of climb, and fuel consumption. A decade or so later, and to the amazement of the world, the first 747 rolled off the Boeing production line in its striking white and red livery. A colour scheme reflected perfectly in this limited edition Navitimer. Brighton has used its modern 43mm B01 Navitimer as the basis for the 747. It has a 43mm diameter across the bezel, measures 40.5mm across the case, and has a look-to-look -look dimension of 49mm. The lug width is a modern 22mm with the total weight, including the strap, coming in at 95 grams. Since George Kern took over at Brighton in 2017, the Navitimer has been modernised in terms of its design, specifically its fit resulting in more wearable dimensions compared to the versions that preceded, especially those of the early to mid 2000s. This is most notable in the revised look to look and look width dimensions. The looks on the latest Navitimer are considerably shorter and steeper than in the past, resulting in a more compact fit without an overall reduction in diameter. This massively improves fit, especially on a smaller wrist, making it wear much smaller than a traditional 43mm. The wide lug width of 22mm makes for an impressive stance on wrist, especially combined with a reasonable thickness of 13.6mm. The case is broken up into various sections breaking up the bulk of its design. We have a mid-case section that's 5mm thick, leading to a further 5mm of bezel and crystal. The remaining 3.6mm are made up of the case back, which hides itself well when on wrist, resulting in a watch that sits low, further disguising its height. We have a case that's made from 316 stainless steel with a mixture of brushed and high polished surfaces. The outer flanks of the mid case are all brushed while the tops of the lugs are highly polished, including the strong bevels and squared off lug tips. So the bezel structure is the most iconic part of the Navitimer's design and features its most famous feature, the slide rule. A rotating bezel but unlike the bezel of a dive watch it doesn't turn in predefined clicks, it instead glides in either direction. The bezel face is concealed under the main crystal of the watch face, unlike most dive or GMT bezels. The action is firm but can be placed to a fraction of a millimetre allowing perfect alignment of the bezel and dial markings. For grip we have an outer ring of stainless steel with large prominent knurling. The outer ring and teeth are both of high polish. The base of the bezel is white in colour and features predominantly black markings. The only exception are three blue inverted triangles and the 60 numeral. These are the main alignment points for performing calculations. It's also notable that due to this being a sliding bezel, there is no sound whatsoever when it turns. The crystal is a cambered sapphire featuring anti-reflective coating on both sides, the same as most modern Brighton models. There are two things of note about this. First off, the nature of the coating. Although excellent at reducing reflections, you do get a slight blue shadow cast from certain angles. The three chronograph subdials are black in colour, but more often than not appear dark blue due to the coating's effect. Secondly, it's common for anti-reflective coatings to be applied to the underside of crystals, but when also applied to the outer face, it is susceptible to scratching, which kind of negates having a scratch-proof sapphire, when scratches to the AR coating can still be seen. The sapphire itself is domed, with its arc perfectly meeting the bezel edge. The edge of the sapphire is not visible when viewed in profile. The crown can be found on the right side of the case, it's made from steel and features an all-brushed finish. We have a standard push-pull setup resulting in a somewhat poor 30 meters of water resistance. Its design is large, almost onion-shaped, and features prominent 
nod teeth for easy operation, along with a raised Brightling B logo on its face. We have three active crown positions. When it's in its default position, flat against its case, we can manually wind the movement if required. When pulled to its first position, we can quick set the date and finally in its second set the time. Above and below the crown in the two and four o'clock positions, we have two steel chronograph pushers. The pusher at two starts and stops the chronograph function with the pusher at four used to reset. Both pushers are made from steel featuring high polish on their faces and lower stalk sections with a satin finish on the upper pusher elements. When it comes to the dial, we have a bright white base perfectly matching the slide rule. Both feature a satin finish for zero reflections. On the outer edge of the dial where it meets the bezel, we have a three millimeter ring of vivid semi-gloss red. This combined with the bright white dial perfectly pay homage to the original red and white livery of the first 747. The main indices are made from rhodium plated stainless steel featuring highly polished facets, with each indice also including a square plot of loom. Below 12, we have an applied logo, but instead of the traditional Breitling B, we have the logo of the American Aircraft and Pilots Association. Below this, we have Breitling and its founding year 1884 printed in black. At center, just below the hands, we have the word Navitimer printed in capitals again in black. Finally, we have the word Swiss made located just below the six o'clock subdial. The only other text and specific to this limited edition are the words Boeing 747, printed in white on the red outer ring. This can be found adjacent to the eight o'clock marker and has been very nicely executed. Some watches suffer from ugly co-branding, but this is super discreet. So much so it takes a while to actually notice it. It's another delightful nod to the 747. As the watch is a chronograph, we have a traditional three subdial setup at the three, six, and nine positions. The dials are all of the same size, black in color, feature white markings, and are slightly indented into the main dial. The subdial at three shows elapsed minutes with a 30 minute register. The dial at six shows elapsed hours and the dial at nine showing running seconds. This is the running second display of the watch in general and will always be running regardless of whether the chronograph function is active. Chronograph seconds can instead be read by the main red seconds hand at center. A nice feature of the B01 movement is its vertical clutch, meaning that you can leave the seconds hand running full time if desired. This puts no extra wear and tear onto the movement unlike movements that utilize a lateral clutch. This is a small point, but personally it is nice to have the main seconds hand running continually. Finally, within the six o'clock subdial, we have a date aperture, revealing a colored match date disc and white printed numerals. When it comes to the hands, we have the standard three hand setup with hours, minutes, and seconds. The arrow and minute hands are again made from rhodium plated stainless steel. They're highly polished and feature a sword star design that chamfers back to the center pinion. Both are also faceted, helping to increase contrast and readability from the dial below. The arrow and minute hands like the indices also feature green loom for visibility in dark conditions. The seconds hand features a counterweighted design and has been painted in the same red color as the original 747, adding a further splash of color to the dial. Finally, we have the three subdial hands, again, all in high polish. Like the case, the case back is made from steel. It's screwed down and features a hexagonal pattern on its outer edge, leading to a lower circle of satin where it meets the case. The reverse side of the case itself is also of high polish. The main outer ring of the case back features engravings. However, this one is slightly different to a standard Navitimer. We get the same certified chronometer text, but in addition, we now have engravings that read the original jumbo jet and one of 747. As with all modern Navitimers, we also get an exhibition case back made from the same sapphire as the watch face. This provides a clear view of the B01 movement within. The Navitimer 747 is available with a seven link steel bracelet or as seen here, a two piece black alligator strap. It's made from large cut alligator leather on the top side and features a semi-gloss finish. We have a contrasting white stitch and yellow calfskin on the underside, along with embossed Breitling logos. The strap is thick cut and features internal bolstering, which results in a substantial, luxurious feel. Each piece tapers from 22 millimeters at the lug end down to 18 millimeters at the clasp. It features seven points of strap adjustment. The leather strap is supplied with a hybrid buckle deployment style clasp made from steel. When on the wrist, it wears like a traditional buckle and tank. However, it opens up in a standard deployment format. This looks great and provides extra security from accidentally dropping the watch. The clasp has a mostly high polished finish apart from its top side near the release triggers. Here we have brushed stainless steel with engraved writing text and B logo. There are no forms of micro adjustment within the clasp itself. All sizing is taken care of by the seven adjustable strap positions. As with all modern Navitimers, we get Brotlin's in-house B01 automatic movement. It's a self-winding automatic that features a column wheel and vertical clutch, a free sprung balance, quick set date, and a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, or four hertz. We also get hacking seconds, allowing the watch to be set to an accurate reference time. Furthermore, it pivots on 47 joules and has a power reserve of 70 hours. The only thing really missing from the movement is a silicon hairspring, so the watch is susceptible to magnetic fields. This is a strange emission by Breitling, who was part of a movement exchange with Tube 
Tudor allowed them to use the B01 movement in their Black Bay chronograph. However, Tudor modified that movement in-house and include a silicon hairspring, then sell it in a watch that costs half the price of this Navi timer. The B01 is cost certified, guarantee an accuracy of minus four to plus six seconds per 24 hours. Although testing is done in five positions, it's a test of the bare movement and not a test of the fully cased up watch. Unlike the Metas test performed by Amiga and recently Tudor, or the thousand hour control test of JLC. On a positive note, the B01 is a good looking movement and can be fully appreciated through the exhibition case back. The finishing is mechanically executed, so not outstanding, with the overall movement being finished to a high enough degree to warrant the Sapphire case back. When it comes to wearability, the 43mm Navitimer wears fantastic, especially on a smaller wrist. I always thought if I ever purchased a Navitimer, I'd go with the 41mm option. However, now seeing this in the flesh, I'd go with the 43mm every day. The styling tweaks applied by George Kern really do make the watch wear exceptionally well. Here you can see the watch on my 6.5 inch wrist against a selection of other watches for a visual reference. On the left, we have a Rolex Explorer 2. It has a diameter of 42 millimeters, a thickness of 12.5 millimeters, and a look to look of 50 millimeters. On the right, we have a Seiko 5 Diver. It also has a diameter of 42 millimeters, a thickness of 13.4 millimeters, although it is seen here on a double pass NATO, adding another two millimeters to the height. It has a look to look dimension of 46 millimeters. Considering the Breitling is a chronograph and therefore contains more parts and complications, you can see it wears well in terms of thickness and wrist span. The fact the case, not including the bezel, is only 40.5 millimeters in diameter, along with the compact look to look dimensions of 47 millimeters make the Navitimer wear far more compact than 43 millimeters would suggest. Think of this as a general 41 millimeter watch and you won't be far off. When it comes to price, the 747 limited edition comes in at £7,550 on the leather strap and £5,800 on the bracelet. For reference, a standard 43mm Navitimer comes in at £7,300 and £7,550 respectively. An increase of £300 seems more than fair considering the watch is limited to just 747 units. Okay, so on to the not so good things about the Navitimer 747. Specs as a daily wear. The water resistance of 30 meters and the lack of any major protection against magnetism need to be considered before you strap this on every day. It's not a watch you want to be caught wearing in a downpour, let alone consider going swimming in. Stay well clear of any water. It would be nice if the water resistance figure was improved. We know Breitling are capable of doing this in a chronograph, as a newly introduced Breitling Premier has a water resistance of 100 meters. Anti-reflective coating. Don't get me wrong, the double application on both sides of the crystal do their job. However, it does make the watch susceptible to visible scratching that can't be polished out. It's a minor detail, but one worth noting. So what about all that's good? When the watch was first unveiled, I wasn't overly sure about the red ring on the dial. However, from learning more about its significance to the 747 and actually seeing it in person, I think it looks amazing in the flesh. It's a subtle but completely accurate representation of that original 747 livery. The subtle co-branding. On too many occasions, watch brands feel the need to make a bold visual statement with the logos and text of partner brands. The Ferrari edition Panerai spring immediately to mind. Not here though. The subtle dial placement and size of the Boeing text has been executed superbly. If you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't see it. The fit. This applies to all modern 43mm Navitimers, not just this special edition, but the fit really is exceptional. It has a strong stance on wrist, but is in no way overpowering. The modern Breitling look. Not sure how to explain this, but there's just something about the look of this modern Navitimer that feels special. Against other watches of a similar value, it just has an aura about it that shouts luxury. I think it's a combination of the timeless Navitimer design and dial layout, combined with highly polished sharply cut indices that play wonderfully with the light. It gives me Grand Seiko Zuratsu vibes. Don't get me wrong, seven and a half thousand pounds for a watch is a shed load of cash, but for a limited edition, the 300 pound increase is more than palatable. So what's the verdict on the Navitimer 747? Is it the ultimate Navitimer variant? I guess it's down to your personal feelings on the Boeing 747 and whether or not you like the color scheme. As a tribute to the 747, I think it's excellent. The color scheme of the plane has been beautifully shoehorned into the dial, resulting in a subtle, elegant tribute. I think as part of a wider collection, especially if you're an aviation fan, the Navitimer 747 definitely deserves your consideration. I'd personally think twice about having it as a one watch collection or wearing it as a daily wear. The 30 meter water resistance and somewhat dressy vibe don't really lend themselves well as a daily wear in my opinion. But I guess that's not really the point. This is a tribute watch, a tribute between two icons of aviation. The queen of the skies is sadly no more, but in this watch, it lives on, immortalized forever in this iconic timepiece. In the world of aviation, the Breitling Navitimer and the Boeing 747 are a match made in heaven. Guys, thank you so much for watching. What are your thoughts on the Navitimer 747? Do you think it's a worthy tribute to the legendary Boeing? Would you choose this over a standard 43 millimeter Navitimer? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next review, and we'll catch you in the next video.